Hey guys, welcome back to Tamiya Legends and once again, thank you for stopping by. So this is part two of my TRF 503 build. Um, we'll bring the camera over and I'll show you where we're up to so far. But we've basically got um, everything on the chassis now. The diffs are in, all the belts, the top decks are on. Um, if you've not seen that first build to this stage, I'll put a link in the description to you. Um, I won't go into everything we're doing on this because I said it on the first video but in this actual video we'll finish this, this chassis today <coughs> excuse me um, with a view just to be getting the shell and wing on it after that so there's still a fair bit to do to be honest but um, yeah this is a thing of beauty so let's get cracking right so quick recap of um, where we're up to um, <laughs> I love looking at this thing it is rather special um, so the steering mechani me mechanism is in and it's all fully ball rest. Um, the car obviously comes fully ball rest. Uh, the only aftermarket parts on this is the fiber light um, carbon chassis and I've also had um, some of the carbon um, battery straps made because it comes with plastic but I've gone for carbon. Um, all the carbon top decks and the carbon shock towers come with the kit. Um, slipper clutch is standard. So as I say, this section is all finished and the uh, it just feels super smooth. Um, if you are interested in the build, as I said, go check out the first video because um, these these are oil diffs and it's the first time I've ever done them. You can actually fill them full of oil. Um, I know that's, to you, some of you guys, that's probably normal, but for me, that's the first time I've ever done that. So the first stage up for this car now in this video is to get the universal joints drive shafts built. So let's get cracking. Right, that's the front um, universal shafts made up. Um, very straightforward, but there's this like spring clip here that you've got to get over. That's, uh, I don't know if that's focusing in. Focus, damn you. That's, uh, so you got to make sure that's in the right position, but um, yeah, once it's in, it's in. Um, so next up now is to start working on, sorry, their, their rears, I should say. Um, so let's get the rest of the bits out on section 17, the rear hubs. Right, that's stage 17 finished, which is basically building the rear arms up. Um, there's a fair bit of shimming that goes on. There's some strange little grub screws that you put in either side of this turnbuckle end and I've got to be honest I don't know what they're for I've studied the instructions and I was like do you put the grub screws in first and then the, the ball end or vice versa but you, you from you can't get the grub screws in once this ball ends in so I took it back out and I put the grub screws in and then this goes on top really not sure what that's for that's really confused me. Anyway, I've got them both built. Um, I've made the two rear turnbuckles for it. We've got the alloy um, support for the back end and then the screws and the spacers to put this on now. Now, I've been through all the bags and all these turnbuckles should have like a little foam, what they could tell me are called dust protectors on. That's definitely not in this kit. Don't know if they were never in the kit or we were just missing. It's no big deal at all. Um, it makes no difference to me. I can get some and put some on later. If I even even if I I might not even bother. I don't know. So next stage now is eighteen is to get this all on the back end. Right, that's section eighteen finished, which was just basically putting these arms on. That's quite a fiddly job actually, um, because this bit here, the UJ into this hub, isn't kind of fixed. It's it's on a bearing on the inside, but I don't think it works until everything's sort of in the car um, but anyway that's that's on now and obviously we've got some travel um, that's held in by this this alloy brace across here with two screws that go up there I'm curious to see what goes over the back to cover that um, anyway that's as far as we can go with that so now looking at um, Step 19, we've got to now build the um, front universal shafts. I'll show you. So the front universal shafts to build and then to start um, putting the, the steering hubs on and things like that and eventually onto the, the main arms. Right, let's get cracking. Just jumping on quickly, I got that back end wrong. I put the, the wrong small, the, the 
two pairs of bearings and I put the small one in the rears and that was incorrect and that's why it was flapping around. Um, idiot, I should have picked up on that instantly. Um, but I actually didn't until I started putting the the front bearings in the front hubs. So anyway, I've whizzed the turnbuckles off, took the shafts back out and I've fitted those bearings and obviously that's way better now. So I'll continue with the front now. So that's the pair of front arms made up with the steering all in, bearings are in, or one side of the bearings in. Turnbuckles are now made up for it and again this has a an alloy brace to put it on the front. Um, held on with two screws. Um, so yeah, next step is I'm on stage 21 and it's to bang this on the car now. Right, so that's the front end on, um, but it's not held in place now. The brace is on, but obviously there's something to go over here because these pins could just come out. But all the movements there, turnbuckles are on and everything's moving as it should. Um, I'll tell you what, obviously I've had a 503 before, but it came to me built. I never realised just how sort of top spec it is. Now, what I mean by that is, all, all these bits that are hidden once the bumpers and stuff go on, I never realised it was kind of this robust. All the arms front and back and on each side are held in on, on with alloy. I didn't realise that at all. Because as I say, it gets covered up. But when you when you come to build one, you, 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 you I get more of appreciation of it, to be honest. Anyway, so I don't, I'll put that down gently. I don't want to lose those pins. So that was stage 21. Um, 22 now is to build the rear anti-roll bar. This car only comes with one roll bar, and it's on the rear. I'm just making sure I'm correct at that. I am, yeah. So once that's built, um, anyway, let's tap. Let's talk. Let's talk. Let's get that um, stabilizer built. Right. So we've got a very blingy looking rear anti-roll bar with the alloy. I've just nipped the centre ones up for now to keep them from rolling around. We've made the little turnbuckles up, um, grub screws in here, so I've just dug the screws out so job now is to fit this on the back and then once that's done there's a cover that goes underneath it as well which is this thing. So I need to just figure this off, figure this out off camera now how to do that. Right so that's the back end basically finished off now. Um, that was quite fiddly to get that on. The anti-roll bar, swear bar, yeah, it was pretty fiddly, um, but as you can see, it's now doing what it's supposed to do. Um, and to finish that off, so that's all bolted up on the back end, and then underneath was just that little black cover at the back, which just tidies that back end up. So now there's no, as I said, there's no swear bar for the front. I know you can get them as an option, um, but now we're on stage. Um, 24 where there's the front diff cover and then there's like a little bumper to go on as well there are some um, brackets to put on for a swear bar in the future so I guess I may as well just fit them um, while we're here but uh, yeah we're getting there now right we just had a very bizarre moment so I bolted the front end down um, I didn't bother putting the grub screws for the swear bar that's not there. I, I'll save them for a later date should I ever fit one. But that was all bolted up and it was a case of just putting this front bumper on here. Two screws there and one through the middle. So I got the right screws out, fastened them all down. Great. Come to move the spur gear. Absolutely jam solid. So I'm thinking, oh Christ, I've used the wrong screw. So I whipped them out really quickly. Um, double checked them with manual. I've, I've used the correct screws. So... Without the screws on, I put it on, and if even if I just pressed it down with my thumb, it was hitting on the diff gear. So then I looked at the instructions, and it says here on this diagram, trim portions that come in contact. And they've obviously they've, they've gouged some out here, and I was like, well, how the hell am I going to do that? It's a solid piece of plastic. Um, so I'm double checking the instructions again. There's absolutely nothing there. So all it does tell you is to gouge this out, so, 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 so that'll allow the, the diff to spin and not come against that plastic. So I was like, well, I'm stuffed now because I haven't got any tooling that I can do that with. Anyway, out of the odd screws and that, there were two blue plastic collars, anodized metal collars. So 
there's nowhere in the instructions. So what I did was I put the blue collars underneath each screw there um, on the inside, and then I've screwed it all up. And it's flush, which was my main worry if I did that. But as you can see now, that's that's super free. That's very odd. Now normally with Tamiya, you know, if if you have if you have an error like that, then they'd have a little, another little piece of paper in there saying, um, when you get to that step, see paper so and so, and it'll tell you what what mod to do. So yeah, that's at least I mean that's super free and that's how it should be. But um, I'm gonna have to just be careful now and make sure that those two little blue collars are not wanted anywhere else. But I don't think they are to be honest. I think that's why they were in there. But God, if you didn't think of doing that, you'd be stuffed and try to gouge that plastic out. Anyway, that car is really taking shape now. So, next up on the instructions is the dampers. Now, I've got these built already. Um, but this is where we're going to have a little bit of an issue, I fear. So, if I just get the bag. So, I built these up for to put on my TRF style egress. Um, and make some running videos with it, which I've done. But these big bar aerations didn't fit the egress properly, so I had to put a lot of internal spaces in to make them shorter. And I've not taken those out. So I've got a horrible feeling that this car... Well, let, what we'll do is I'll dig all the um, shock fixings out and we'll mount the shocks and then we'll have to put the wheels on. Um, we're kind of jumping a few steps by putting the wheels on, but... If I get the shocks on I'm, and the stance is completely wrong, then I'm going to have to open and drain the oil out, take the spaces out. There's a load of messing around there. So let's bang them on as they are and uh, cross our fingers. Right, I've just fitted um, a front and back shock on on one side just to see if I can save myself some time without stripping them. So the front, they're both set correctly, but obviously the, the shocks are quite a bit shorter than they should be. But I, I like them with a lower stance anyway, as you know. So there's there's plenty of movement. That's not the issue. Um, it's weather, how it's going to sit now. But looking at it right now, obviously if the chassis is flat to the floor. But then you've got to put the wheels on. So I think realistically it's going to be about there. So right now it doesn't look too bad. So what I'll do is I'll get the other two shocks on. Um, and then what we'll have to do is I'll have to stick with tyres on the wheels and we'll have to mount now so we're doing it out of sync but we'll get the wheels on and we'll just see what kind of stance it's got with the shocks in this sort of current state the setup for shocks are on oh my god it looks so good damn looks superb really really liking this wow I know I said I was going to stick the wheels on, but I just got carried away when I've just seen it, kind of. It's the first time it's kind of looked like a a car. Oh my god. They're without doubt the best Tamiya shocks of all time. Um, even better than high caps for me. And obviously performance wise, these are way better. But I just love the aeration big bars. I just, the, the colours, everything's just right on them. Anyway, I'm waffling. So yeah, I'll dig the wheels and tires. We'll get them. We'll get them mounted. I'm gonna have to dig the bearings out now for all the the axles because, as I say, we are skipping slightly to get that done. But it's worth doing in case I have to take those shocks back off. Right, that's pretty much good to go. I've dodged a bullet that one with that one. That's um, I'm really chuffed. I'm, I'm I don't think I'm gonna have to touch the shocks. Obviously, when we do come and run it. Um, the spaces will have to come out and, and the car will have to be reset up. But right now, obviously, with winter coming, this has got I've got no intention of this thing running. So it just needs to sort of sit and look pretty on the shelf. Um, as I say, there's loads of travel. There's, um, that's not an issue at all. Feels great, to be honest. Um, obviously, the um, all the cambers way out. God. It's really, really way out, but that's something to do on towards the end. But right now, really smooth, you know, really, really smooth. Um, right, I need to now go back to the manual and see what's next, really, because again, we only jumped to this section just to get 
to make sure that was going to be okay. So, um, yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, right, let's get the wheels back off and see what's next to do. Right, so next step, um, I've just fitted the obligatory blue wheel nuts. You've got to have them, guys. If you don't have them, your car's lacking. Next stage is to cut this under tray out now. Now, it's not the full under tray. It's just the two side sections you have to cut out. I don't know if you can see the lines. And then they just bolt down to the sides of the chassis. But it's a little bit more involved than that. Once you get these cut out, these go underneath. But there's also the battery. Um, all the battery gear goes in there at the same time. So, yeah, let's get these cut out. Right, unfortunately, I made a huge fupa. Um, and I'm absolutely gutted about it. Um, I wasn't paying attention. So the under tray um, on the instructions is very clear way where to cut. And I, for whatever reason, just forgot. And I cut to the other cut lines on there, which is all this section here. But it should kind of go the full length. Didn't realise to the very end when I was trying to fit it. I'm like, what's going on here? So they're actually absolutely trashed, the Tamiya ones, um, can't use them. So luckily, and this is very lucky, when Craig painted the first shell, it, it came with an under tray. Um, now obviously it's not Tamiya, it's aftermarket, so the, it's more of a generic one, so I had to make it fit myself. Um, and it's taken me probably a good hour, an hour and a half to get it on, but you can see it there and how it works. Um, yeah, I really balls that up massively and because there's no markings on it I was having to put the Tamiya ones on the inside and mark round them and I only had this one mounting spot here to get the length correct and now obviously so that got it got me to the, the correct starting position but then I had to work out with the body shell if what how how they're supposed to run yeah, that was an absolute nightmare. Anyway, luckily we've got it. We've got it finished now. Um, I've also to to bolt it down. The battery um, holders are in down at the bottom. The twenty five gram um, Tamiya weights are in. They're just on double sided tape. Again, obviously they can be in or out depending on for your balance of your car. But for me, just because right now we're not running this, it's all about bling. So I've put those in. Um, we've got the alloy battery posts in with the, the brand new carbon towers, sorry carbon battery straps that Nick did uh, and I've just put as you can see a TRF decal on each one which I think really does look cool. So yeah that is, that was a mission, I can't believe I made that mistake. Just shows you doesn't it, you just in your own little world doing stuff and uh, these things happen, I guess. But um, yeah, I'm I'm reasonably happy with that now. It's it's not perfect, but um, yeah, it's got it's got me out of the hole. Um, you can also buy protectors for the chassis as well. Probably should invest in one of those before I, before I run it because we don't want to scratch that carbon up. Um, right. So next job now is just to get the um, steering servo holder in. Now, I'm not, as I say, I won't even bother putting a servo in, so I won't make the um, servo server up, but we'll get the brackets built up and in place, because I think it's, yeah, there's one here, so there's an alloy bracket, and I'm sure there's a little piece of carbon that goes across it as well. Oh, wow, it's a very, very nice looking thing though, isn't it? Look at that. Yeah, we'll, uh, we're liking that. Right, that's the three turnbuckles made up. There's a left and a right, and then the one for the servo. Uh, and then that's how the servo clamps in. Just on two bolts through the uh, chassis. Little carbon deck on top. Very smart looking thing. Right, let's get that section in. And that's the final bit of the steering in. So as I say, I've just put the turnbuckle loose in there. Um, it's two different sizes. If you, I've just set that up for a normal size servo when I use it. Um, which takes this particular length turnbuckle and the longer ends but when you use a shorter a stubby servo you have to um, build a different type up for some reason um, and then we've got the left and right turnbuckles on and um, that's as you can now the problem is because the wheels are not on the drive shafts are going in which then 
doesn't um, give you the full amount of steering but you can see it there how that works it absolutely feels great to be honest so I'm pretty certain that's that's the car built now that's everything on it that I can do at the moment and it's looking great and she's done and I have to say that is one of the most enjoyable builds I've ever done because it is a little bit different um, obviously you're kind of using the best of parts aren't you that Tamiya have um, but it goes together really really nicely and and just new stuff you know like the the oil diffs and stuff which are new to me it was just nice to have a mess around with something a little bit different also we got away with not having to touch the shocks which is awesome again when we come to run it we will have to but right now you know i mean because of winter this thing's probably going to be on the shelf for, for possibly even five months from now so yeah the the running of this is a is a way off unfortunately but um yeah just just absolutely enjoyable from start to finish to be honest um i'm gonna call this video a day uh, I'm, well i'm gonna yeah i'm gonna end it here because the next thing is to mount the body and wing and it's a little bit more involved than that because I've got two shells and got two different wings. I've only got one set of TRF decals for it, so I need to make sure 100% I pick the right shell. Um, I will get some more TRF decals on order, but I'll also probably be using the 503 decals that are left as well. Now, they'll only, there's only enough of those to go on one shell, so yeah, there's going to be a bit of messing around in that video um, of getting it getting it how I want it first before we put any decals on but um, yeah I mean that's that's the car this car's so pretty you could you could display that actually as Tamiya did when they launched it they put it at an angle and just displayed it on you know in a cabinet with with the correct lighting on it and that and everything popping absolutely superb so once again thanks so much for watching it's really appreciated if you are new to this channel if you could please consider liking and subscribing to support us and if you do that smash that notification bell for our weekly videos if you want to contribute to the channel um, by becoming a patreon that'd be massively appreciated um, so guys as always happy our scene